It's positioned as a powerful, pain-free, at-home alternative to expensive clinical laser treatments. And you don't have to look too far to find skincare influencers raving about their results from using either the newer Nera Pro or the earlier Precision model. But not everyone is happy with their results, with independent consumer reviews painting a more mixed picture. In my recent review of the Nera Pro, which I'll share in the description, I raised a few questions about the mechanism by which results might be achieved. Could it, for instance, just be localized inflammation, creating a temporary plumping effect in the skin? Well, today I have the chance to put both my questions and yours to David Bean, creator of the Nera laser devices, including some pretty challenging ones. And you're gonna find out exactly how it works, what it's targeting in the skin, and some eye-opening data around how often you need to use it to get results. It all adds to what's been a fascinating few weeks here on the channel with the enlightening evidence we've heard in the last two episodes on the role microorganisms on our skin play in its health and how it ages. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to discover how to age well, look and feel good for longer. And I share what I learn with you right here on the Honest channel and on my website, honest.scot. So let's hear now what David Bean has to say as we put the Nera laser under the spotlight. David, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. Well, it's my pleasure to be here. Well, I have reviewed in the past both the original Nera Precision uh, device, that was a few years ago now, and more recently the new Nera Pro. And so I have a lot of questions around your technology, as do my viewers. Um, and I wanted to kind of get into the detail with you around its functionality and the mechanism by which the laser impacts our skin, what it's doing in the skin. Um, and then I'm going to put some viewer points and queries to you as well, if that sounds okay with you. Sounds great. Let's jump into it. Well, first of all, just for background, can you explain how you got into the laser technology industry and ultimately how it led you to create your own device? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting story, like many uh, entrepreneurs and founders. Um, I got started in the telecommunications industry um, in the laser engineering side of it. That industry... Uh, kind of took a downturn um, in early 2002, 2003, and uh, I always wanted to start my own business. So I thought, well, gee, semiconductor lasers um, are really cool. Wouldn't it be great to bring that to the mass market so that everybody has them in their pockets, mm -hmm. you know, in their laptops and things like that to enable high power, you know, but for everybody. Um, and so I started a company making the semiconductor chip inside um, big medical systems, uh, as well as military systems. And and uh, uh, that company's doing very well. Seminex makes the chip inside a lot of professional medical lasers used by dermatologists and plastic surgeons. Um, and then even navigation, like space navigation for docking with the International Space Station uses a laser that I helped develop, as well as um, like driverless cars using laser radar, where the, la the laser in the, the laser radar piece of that for many systems. So, but I always wanted to make it into the home market. So although I was selling chips to professionals, it, it caused the very large systems to become like laptop size or a small cart, um, but it was still, you know, out of reach for most people. Um, and I went to the conferences like uh, AAD, which is the American Association of Dermatologists, mm -hmm. for dermatology, went to uh, lasers and science and medicine conferences and other, talk to the experts. I actually went into Boston where we have a lot of the medical research at Mass General Hospital and talk to the experts. And what I found is it's lasers are pretty simple, whether it's a big machine or a handpiece, it's what wavelength is it? What is the power per square centimeter um, and how that interacts with the tissue? Um, and so I came up the, with the idea, well, I can make these chips, put them in a handpiece and then make them available to the home market for a fraction of the cost of the professional systems mm. was the same chip. Just like the same chip in your laptop is often in mainframes and supercomputers. They just use more of them. And so then I created Nira, which is my second company. Um, it took seven to eight years of product development to get it so that we could avoid the pain and the erythema and make it a fast treatment and a, a good cost. Um, so that was quite a process, but then we came out with our first product, the, the Precision, 
And then a couple of years later, we, we have the pro. So these are all based on a patented approach that basically gets you the same or comparable results to a professional dermatologist visit where you go for laser treatment and you can get it home. But not only is it cheaper, you don't have all the side effects. So uh, that's my story. So, I mean, talk us through, if you don't mind, how the NERA works, the, the technical spec of what you've created, why it's designed the way it is, um, and what you believe it's doing within the skin. Uh, so the science of the laser is um, lasers are very narrow wavelength. They're almost a single wavelength, super narrow, and there's well understood uh, interactions with biology, right? Some laser wavelengths are absorbed in the color, some are absorbed in the hair follicle, some are absorbed in like water, right? And so um, each laser, even if you go to a doctor or a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon, they know this and they buy the laser that have basically optimized for whatever that condition is that they're using it for. And, and doctors will often have many different lasers and that's because they need to use the right wavelength mm -hmm. and power application for the given skincare concern, right? So in this case for Nera, um, I, well, I was selling lasers at various wavelengths for the professionals. And um, our first product, we wanted to do anti-aging. So basically to renew the skin. And so I learned all about the skin. I talked to all the experts and already selling chips in there, just ask, you know, how does this work in your system? Um, and then basically the way most anti-aging lasers work is they target the water in your skin, okay? Mm -hmm. And what they do is they heat up that water it causes um, heat shock proteins, right? Which are a signal, signaling mes mechanism that basically tell the body, hey, I'm under some stress, bring in reinforcements. I need to start rebuilding this area of the body, which happens to be in the dermis where they grow collagen, right? And then with new collagen that absorbs water better, it plumps up and you now you have you know, more volume and it's newer skin and it literally fills in the wrinkle from the inside out. Now in the professional setting, they don't have time to do that slowly, right? So they have to be more aggressive because doctor's time's expensive, you know, office time's expensive, even if it's a technician. So they want to treat you very aggressively and then come back the next month. And it takes three to six treatments to get a good result, even in the doctor's office. And that's three to six months, right? So, um, and they use fractional treatment. So they not only stress, but they destroy a column of tissue and these little dots, it's called fractional uh, laser treatment or Fraxel is one mm -hmm. of the brand names behind it. Um, and then you go back and these dots are randomized and those denatured columns of tissue, which are destroyed, they have to regrow, but also there's collateral damage on the sides of stress tissue, which also improves the collagen and over those multiple treatments, you turn over your skin and uh, you look great. Um, and you get certain levels of improvement on the Fitzpatrick scale. What NERA does is we, we stimulate the heat shock protein, but we get the advantage that we can stimulate every day by daily treatments. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to go to the point of necrosis, a very high level, and mm -hmm. destroy a column of tissue. We treat the whole skin, not fractional. It's non-fractional but we treat it above the point where the skin is stressed simply by heating up the water. We heat up the water using the optimal wavelength of 1450. Um, above 39 degrees C, heat shock proteins start being generated. Um, and above 45 C, you feel discomfort. So this is a zone where you can heat up the dermis with the laser, be above the point where you turn on your renewing, but below the point where you feel pain. So if you go to the doctors, they, they go so high, it's actually painful. And they have to put on top of going anesthetic or else it's just not tolerable. At home with the NERA, as you've demonstrated, mm -hmm. um, you can tune it in so you feel the warmth, but below that pain threshold, and that's exactly where you want to be. And so we patented this process, uh, did our own clinical studies and put it before the FDA to say, we want to claim full wrinkle and fine line reduction you know, that lasts. Mm -hmm. And they, they said, okay, you can do that, but you have to do three months post follow-up to show that those results lasted three months after with no laser treatment. So we did all that with a good study. You, you referenced it in some mm -hmm. of your previous mm -hmm. videos. 
And the stats are right there in the public disclosure, right there by FDA. And this is, was around the eyes, the periorbital area that you were studying. Exactly. In particular. Recently. Yep. So we started with the high area of interest because the eyes are the first thing that people are concerned about as they age. Yeah. So, so it worked for the vast majority of folks and, um, and they maintained it. The majority maintained it that three months post-treatment. So we could say that. Now, most... Most products of the market, they don't do a clinical study. Um, and a lot of the reason is they, they try to tag along, say we're identical to something else that was done years and years ago. The, the problem is years ago, the FDA was more lax. And one of your doctors, dermatologist doctors, um, said that the FDA is focused more on safety than efficacy. And, mm. and that used to be the case. Today, they equally wait. You have to both be safe, and then you have to prove that your device, without a doubt, you know, statistically speaking, does have efficacy for whatever you claim. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, that that's how it works. Um, and we we proved out with our clinical study that most people get one full Fitzpat Fitzpatrick wrinkle scale improvement. You know, and those that don't get one full one, they they get a little bit less. Some get two and three. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends on how much many wrinkles you start with. Uh, frankly, because if you don't have many wrinkles, you can't improve too much. Yeah. Um, and that's comparable to the professional systems that I mentioned with the fraction. Well, that was what my next question was going to be. How does that compare with professional treatments? Because with the professional treatments, um, they there is more downtime, but the results can be more dramatic. Of course, they show the best results, right? The mm -hmm. therapy results, right? We try to be fair, and if you go to our website, we show many before and afters because we want viewers to know this wasn't a one-off case. Mm -hmm. One person, you know, had a hero result, but most people don't. So um, most people get results, and and most people are very happy with the results. Um, so because you're treating yourself daily, we put in about three joules per centimeter squared in each treatment. Okay, if you go to a doctor's office, it's between seven and 14 joules per centimeter squared, right? Mm -hmm. But they just do it once a month. We do it every day. So that three joules day after day after day, we're actually putting in many times the amount of energy into the skin mm -hmm. compared to a monthly doctor's visit. And that's how we're able to get equivalent results. And I mean, what, what kind of depths is this treating within the skin? And, you know, it's targeting water, but how do we know it's not actually affecting other cells? Yeah, that's great. Fat cells obviously being of yeah. primary concern. Anytime you're putting heat into the skin, yeah. there's got to be a chance, right? There's got to be a chance. You, obviously, you don't want to lose the fat in your face. You, mm. you, want, you want as much volume as you can. And you look at a baby's skin, they're, they're just so puffed up. They're like a balloon. They're beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. That's what everybody wants, right? So we, we don't want to go there. And that's the beauty of our laser at 14, 15 nanometers, right? Because it's targeted specifically at um, water. And it's it's about 10,000 times the absorption of water compared to melanin or hemoglobin. So it's pretty much not absorbed in anything but water. And so on clean, dry skin, your epidermis has, has no water because you mm -hmm. cleaned it, you dried it. Mm -hmm. So it goes down until it hits water. And that's where your dermis layers are. OK, and we've proven um, with studies and, and analysis, and it's well understood in the, in the um, clinical literature, that 1450 won't go any deeper than about uh, 600, maybe 700 uh, microns into the skin, which mm -hmm. is about um, like a millimeter, a little less than. OK, a OK, um, and that's into the dermis um, below this, the epidermis. Uh, below that, you have your subcutaneous layers and mm -hmm. fat and muscles and things of that nature. So all the energy is right into the dermis, very selective. If you use other modalities like microcurrent or RF, uh, ultrasound, they're much less selective, okay? Um, or IPL, intense pulse light, a shorter wavelength, which goes much deeper. You know, you can, right. you can shoot red light and you can see it goes right through your finger. Right. It's very low absorption, so it goes much deeper, but there's a lot of collateral damage. And and you ideally you don't want that. For instance, because it's it's interesting, I have wondered this. Um, using an IPL device on your face for hair removal, 
I mean, in view, your view, is that a higher risk then of hitting something you don't want to hit <laughs> as well as the hair follicle? Right. So, so IPL uses short wavelengths between about 600 and, you know, 850 nanometers, right? And mm -hmm. it's kind of a broader spectrum in that. And they put filters on it to try mm -hmm. to narrow it a little bit. Um, so you're trying to, in that case, absorb it in color, right? We can mm -hmm. see the color in, in those wavelengths. And, and that's why you have to shave your, your hair and then do the IPL. And it's only absorbed in the color that's in, in your hair, you know, follicle cell. Um, and then it heats up and, and damages the cell. So you'd, I would recommend you don't do that regularly because it'll go deeper than, than where it's not absorbed in, in the hair. It keeps going. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so, but fortunately, that's, you know, once you've done your regiment there and the hair is not coming back, then you don't do that anymore. So yeah. it's it's fine. I haven't heard a lot, but I have had one or two viewers who did feel like they had experienced some fat loss around the eye. I mean, is what what's your view on that? That's using the Nera, in particular, the earlier model. And we, we can come on to the difference between the models with this with this new head sitting slightly further back with the pro does that help negate any chance of that or what what's your feeling about the chances of fat loss yeah so what i would say is uh we've done clinical studies a few mm -hmm. of them uh, you quoted some of them and we haven't seen that at all it mm -hmm. hasn't been a result okay in fact in our clinical studies in a controlled setting uh, no one has regressed. They've either maintained or, in most cases, they're improving their their looks and their volume and their skin and their wrinkle reduction. Um, and then in clinical studies, which uses the same wavelength or a slightly different one at 1550, which is just a little bit longer, goes a little bit deeper, um, those haven't seen the side effect of mm -hmm. losing fat uh, and volume. So, and it's the same laser technology. Yeah. You know? A laser is a light's light, right? And it's interacted with tissue and in a similar way. And our fluence or power level is about half. The energy is about half the dermatologist. So it's that much safer. Um, so I I don't see that now. This could be confounding reasons, you know, if someone's not getting enough sleep, if their nutrition's poor, things of that nature, they will look sulking and you know their eyes could even cavitate things mm -hmm. like that so there could be other reasons behind that okay um you mentioned that in my um Nero pro review i had asked a doctor to sort of take a look at the um the study that you did and and, and give her a take on it um, and she had mentioned the possibility of localized inflammation i don't know if that's something you've heard before you know where especially where where there's the the kind of water heating mechanism is that a possibility or even um something that you might see in addition with daily use that there's some plumping of skin simply through localized inflammation so with uh fractional lasers uh -huh. um, yeah like at the doctor's office um you will see that because you're you're destroying a column of tissue and those little dots in the fractional treatment um and it causes a uh, inflammation reaction mm -hmm. and so they'll see because of that inflammation it fills in the wrinkles temporarily right so they see results faster but that's temporary inflammation results not long term and that's why with the nera not only we don't have that problem um and and post follow-up it never goes down whereas with the fractional lasers uh you'll look the best the last day you do a fractional because you get that local inflammation and then it'll go down a bit Mm -hmm. right to the baseline non-inflamed level and then then you still maintain the improvements of the you know extra collagen uh skin remodeling so we don't have inflammation with the nearer process um and because of that you don't get a quick boost but with the topicals we sell with our device you will get temporary results while you're waiting for the laser to get the long long-term results and it takes well you recommend up to about 12 weeks of daily use of the Nera. I've seen some um, reviewers on YouTube. I mean, there's there's one, uh, I think probably the one that is most, most viewed, who 
was able to achieve quite a noticeable eye lift using the Nira daily. But then she, uh, she commented that she lost some of those results quite quickly afterwards. Now, is that something that from the, the, the study that you did, from the re results you've seen, you've talked about longer term results that have been measured. Is that unusual then to start seeing a droop within you know a week or so having discontinued use? So we have not tested for the, the eye lift uh, condition. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have clinical data on that um, or, or analyze that. Um, we, like you said, we recommend 12 weeks of treatment. Um, and that's frankly because it takes that amount of time for your skin to rejuvenate itself, mm -hmm. right? And, and enough so that you start seeing the result, okay? And it's the same with anything. If, if you're out of shape and you want to get back into shape, no matter how much you work on a gym for one week, you're not going to look that much different. But if you keep going to the gym for 12 weeks, you'll see a profound difference if, you know, if you have a good plan, right, That that's proven, right? So the same is true with skincare, right? A lot of people want to see results in, in one week or a month. We're very upfront at Nira to say, look, it's, you really, you might see okay results at 60 days, but really you want to wait until 90 days, go consistently, and then you'll see very good results. And if you keep going, It'll, it'll continue to progress. Um, so in fact, we we guarantee the device that long so that you can get your full money back because we don't want people to have any risk concern. So that you can take the 90 day challenge. If you don't like it, we'll, we'll give you your money back. Yeah. As far as results lasting goes, now you mentioned um, that you'd measured up to three months afterwards they were the, the results were, were still there were they maintained were they as as good as they were at the end of the 90 day period or had there been some decline over the three months or were they holding up so so believe it or not most people improved okay post and that's stopping completely for a period of three months was it yes yeah because you got to remember you, you've got three months of treatment right and and it takes a couple months for the last treatment to really kick in, yeah, right? and cumulative, right? So it, it makes logical sense that you keep getting better because, you know, you're waiting for those last, you know, month or two of treatments to really kick in. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it was kind of a cool result. Um, and we're actually glad the FDA required us to do that post-treatment because they were doing it, they were concerned about inflammation, it just being a temporary thing. Yeah. So not only wasn't it temporary, but it kept going. So would you recommend that people use it for that period of three months and then take a break for three months? My recommendation is you, you continue to use it. It's, it's okay to take a break for time mm -hmm. to time, if you're on vacation or whatever, just, just like with exercise um, and, and even diet to some degree. Although you gotta be careful. You, you don't you know, completely go off uh, a healthy diet, but from time to time you, you can you know, take a break you know, or have a treat. But as long as you generally staying with good healthy habits, you'll, you'll continue to uh, maintain good health care. Um, so with skin, I equate it to exercise, right? If if you have an exercise regimen, I know, I know you do. I, I enjoy exercising five times a week. I, in fact, really like it. Um, and uh, But it's tough, but you feel great afterwards. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes during, not so much, but after you just feel invigorated, right? So just like with muscle building, you want to pull a muscle but you want to stress it and then your body reacts. So the near is similar. We, we provide daily stress when you treat with heat shock proteins through the NERA, um, you know, thermal interaction. Yeah, because I use the sauna as well. So I'm releasing those heat shock proteins. <laughs> there you go. So the sauna and believe it or not, there's the opposite stretch, which is, uh, you know, deep cold. Yes. Yeah. Haven't tried that. So, and, and then you can even get into new nutrition. Not only is nutrition good, but lack of eating. So go for intermittent fasting or, you know, under, you know, good supervision, a couple multi-day fasts, um, really it's stress in a good way. It gives your digestion system a rest, but it turns on uh, gene expressions that aren't ever turned on unless you have a lack for a long time of mm -hmm. food. And there's, that gene expression is actually to rebuild your body, including your skin, believe it or not. So I am from the school of minimalism. 
So, I mean, I'm always kind of super cautious around the idea of doing something every day, whether it's taking a supplement every day or whether it's using a retinoid every day. I like to approach things from the perspective of what is the minimum amount that I can use this and get results? What is the minimum I think I could use the Nira and get results, do you think? Well, that's that's an interesting question. You know, no one, believe it or not, no one's ever asked me that before. Um, we, we haven't done a clinical study on that, um, but what we what I can say is we analyzed the um, the usage. So in, in the Nira, there's a microprocessor and we actually track on, on the device all the usage. So at the end of the clinical study, we saw, you know, how often people used it. Oh, that's clever. Mm -hmm. So, cause we wanted to track compliance, mm -hmm. so really using it or not, obviously it would not be good if most of them weren't using it, right? It's not good data. So, mm -hmm. uh, and and we'd actually sync it up every every month when they visit the, uh, the clinical uh, doctor who, who did it. It was an independent study. He managed it. And then he would give them feedback, all right, you were 80% compliant or 90% or whatever. Um, so anyway, looking at that data, we found that there wasn't, as long as you're doing it, you know, a reasonable amount, like 50 to 80%, mm -hmm. you're getting good results. Okay. So it didn't require 100%. 50 to 80% of the recommended. So rather than daily, 50 to 80% of that. 50 to 80 percent of the days of the month if you do it i think mm -hmm. you'll be okay mm -hmm. you know so don't don't think if you miss one treatment oh the, the whole month's shot or the whole you know it's not it's just like exercise yeah if you miss one day going to the gym it's okay you know you just mm -hmm. get back with it as you can and if you have to take a week off to go on vacation or wherever and you don't exercise that's okay yeah right? you know so i think i think skincare uh, in this sense, where we're exercising the dermis is is similar. That that's certainly on on my agenda is just not using things absolutely every day because of kind of unknown long term effects, basically. And I I know that you are a real believer in the safety of this device, and I can see why. Um, but that's certainly something that's that's kind of on my mind. Is I want to get the benefits, put the break in, build the brakes in as well. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more because I'm I'm as simple as better too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And also, you know, what, what God designed, I think there's some design elements in the world uh, that if, if you stick with that, with, you know, good, clean nutrition, not processed food, not chemicals. And then same for your skin. I mean, we, we, we did all natural with our hyaluronic acid serum. So it's 100% natural, essentially with, with one just active stabilizer. Um, and we're coming out with um, another cream to match with that very, very soon uh, that, that's going to be awesome to pair with the laser. And again, they're very simple and straightforward. And, and the laser itself, because we're just heating up water in the skin, right? Just like you're lifting a weight, very simple, providing a stretch to the body. There, there's there's no chemicals. There's no additives. There's no, you know. Yeah. Nothing. I recently interviewed... Uh... A scientist, by the time this airs, he'll have been on, um, who specializes in the skin microbiome. And um, it's really preservatives in skincare that he feels is quite damaging, but there's so much to come on that, um, the microbiome. And what we've been doing <laughs> through washing our faces with soap and, uh, you know, all these toners and 11 point skincare routines and so on um just i think i think we're gonna have to do some major rethinking um in terms of skincare so uh the more natural the better i couldn't agree more you you want to work with your body so what your body naturally needs or mm. a lot of people are into this biohacking where you know whether it's saunas or freezing you, you're just or exercise um you're just stimulating your natural body responses yeah and that's i think that's the best way forward now, the difference between the two lasers the, or the two devices that you now sell, can you talk us through what the, the changes in the design are? So the the precision, obviously smaller spot, it was designed for the eyes initially um, and it works really well and it's relatively fast for a small spot. It's, it's only about uh, eight tenths of a second to treat um, and we have the second button so that you don't 
have it treat when you don't expect. So you're in full control, you push the button and you mm -hmm. hear the two beeps and you can move along. Now, this people say can, it's hard for people to get up to five because it's such a- It's nip here, that one, yeah. Right, so what we did when we did the pro is we had a more gradual heat rise. So I equate it to uh, if you draw a hot bath, right? When you put your toe in the bath, you immediately pull it out because your mind is thinking, all right, the, the temperature is rising so fast. If I don't pull my toe out, I'm going to burn myself, right? Mm. So, but then literally within just a few seconds, you put your toe back in the water. Now you can put your whole foot in the water mm -hmm. and, and nothing's changed. The temperature of the water is the same temperature, right? And it's not going to burn you. Um, it's just your mind perceiving it. So we went with a slower temperature rise. It actually gets the same temperature and you can tolerate it up to five, which is mm -hmm. high temperature. Yeah. It actually holds it there longer. It's because the temperature rise isn't so quick. That's why it's more comfortable. Um, right, so, interesting, because it is more comfortable. And we might improve this one at, at some point uh, to be maybe a little bit slower and a little bit more comfortable, but, but it works just the same. If you go to the lower setting that's still comfortable, as long as you're feeling the warmth, either either one work equally well. And with the, the larger one, the Pro, and that tip being um, set a little bit further back or or the, the, he the head of the device being set further back from the tip, if that's making sense. Do you know there's a little bit of a gap at the top there? Was that for a reason? I wondered if that was for comfort as well. So I'm not sure what you mean by that. You're talking about the, the lens? I'm trying to grasp for a technical word that I don't even have in my vocabulary. So you're not going to hire me as one of your engineers, are you, David? Okay, so you can't see it, but but it's the same distance back on both. Oh, is it? Okay. You can put a Q-tip in there and clean the lens. And in it's the, the same. It's the same right. with this one. Uh, this one's so big, you can even put your finger in and touch the yes. glass. Now, we don't use plastic. I mean, this... Because it's absorbed in water, there's some water and plastic. So we we have glass lenses that are anti-reflective coating. Mm -hmm. It's with semiconductor laser, with heat monitoring, and everything. There's a lot of technology in here. Yeah, um, I've I've failed the tech quiz. They're both very well designed. Let me just put it that way, and they were. <laughs> well, well, you, I'm not going to dig myself any deeper. I'm going to move on. Yeah, put put a Q-tip in your precision with a little alcohol on the end of it to clean the lens in there as well. It's in, it's in the instruction book. Okay, I am going to move on to a couple of um, viewer questions if I could. So I've got one, does the Nera help with under eye hollows? My under eye area is not deeply sunken, but I can see a loss of collagen there. Now is that, is it really just, um, are we talking fine lines or do you think where there's volume loss there could be some benefit. Uh, yes, we, we think that there is some benefit there. Um, have we proven it? Uh, no. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I, I actually, I take that back. So we did a clinical study. We do before and after full face pictures. Um, and then we're focused on wrinkles. Um, and we submitted that to the FDA. But we, we ran an analysis to, and these are blinded. So we have a separate dermatologist, actually three separate dermatologists review the before and after pictures and actually the pictures from each mm -hmm. of the six visits and we do a covariant analysis to see you know are there truly a trend based on these people that had never seen the pictures before and they rank the wrinkle of each six in their random order so they don't know which is the first visit which was a fifth which was a sixth etc and then uh, with that blinded review we uh we have a medical statistician crank through the numbers in any case, we did the same thing with, uh, we just, after the fact, we said, well, gee, they have these, some have these dark circles. If we look at those, are they improving? And we saw, saw yeah, they're definitely improving based mm -hmm. on the clinical study we saw. Now, on, only a portion had that indication, but of that portion, they improved. So is that statistically valid sampling? Probably not, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a good indication that this will help in that area. Um, and in the future, we've got other clinical studies pro to, on deck, and that's part of what we're going to do. We're going to look at, does it improve pore size? Um, does it help with skin tone uniformity and the, the dark circles and, mm -hmm. and sunkenness around the eyes we're going to look for? And, and we're going to put that into the hypothesis, 
which will allow us to put it in front of the FDA and, and get those claims uh, if and when we prove them out. The next one relates to something we were talking about earlier. Um, I have been using the Nero for two months and can't really see results around the mouth. Is it supposed to work around that area? Now, interestingly, you said that the difference between results at 60 and 90 days could be quite significant. Um, so I, I'm guessing that would be the first point there. Um, when it comes to the mouth area, uh, you don't have the clinical study to back that. But what, what's your opinion? Yeah, so I can give you an opinion. Uh, we've done separate studies on like smokers lines mm -hmm. uh, on the on the upper lip, uh, and then uh, smile lines. Uh, we, we've seen good improvement in smile lines in the chin area, uh, the neck area, um, of course, around other parts of the the face. For whatever reason, I believe it's partly muscular and and how the skin is very different in the upper lip that those smokers lines, in, or, or, you know, they, they're called smokers lines, but you don't necessarily need to be a smoker to get them, um, seem to be very tough to address. So mm -hmm. those, um, we've had not not great success with the NERA. Um, mm -hmm. We can't claim that it works on those, but in other areas, we've seen really good results. So those deeper lines, um, do you think they're they're more troublesome for obvious reasons? than the finer lines so you got to look at the nature of the wrinkle okay mm -hmm. so if it's if it's soft tissue like in around your eyes and your cheeks and your smile lines that's soft tissue and you want to add collagen and it'll fill those in nicely okay um if it's based on muscles like your eyebrows right if you're frowning mm -hmm. and you have you obviously have wrinkles when when you frown that's your muscles it's got nothing to do and Nira can't address those. And that's where Botox comes in. Botox can relax your forehead muscles. It works very well, as we all know. Um, so, but Botox can't get the soft tissue. And that's where the Nira comes in. Okay. So now moving to the upper lip, I think it's more muscular there. And you can just feel it. There's not a lot of soft tissue mm -hmm. in your upper lip. So I think the nature of that wrinkle is such that, um, you know, it's, it's just hard to address. It could be tougher. Okay. But she's, Two months in, so worth worth going for another month, and then uh, maybe she could come back with your what was it your your ninety day, if if you don't see results after ninety days. That's right. She's welcome to return, and we'll give her a full refund. Okay, that's good to know. With the variability in results, like I even had somebody who says that she works in aviation and her skin is really dehydrated, and she wondered if that might affect the um the impact of the laser where it's targeting water. I mean, could that? Do you have any feel for whether different skin types can affect variability? Have you seen patterns in that where some people will get a better result than another? Why is that? So great question. And mm -hmm. uh, remember how I said you kind of self-calibrated? That's why we have five levels, right? So if, if you're boiling, let's just say you're gonna boil egg, you know, or boil water, for spaghetti or an egg on your kitchen counter, the more water you put in that pot, the longer it takes to heat up, right? Mm -hmm. You need more energy to heat up that water to the point it's boiling, right? So the same is true with the near heating up your skin, right? So if you don't have a lot of water in your skin, you you would use um, a lower level, right? To to heat, heat that water up because it'll heat up quickly. And then you... Uh, you get the heat shock protein, you know, mechanism turning on. If you have a lot of water, you, you can tolerate a higher level because you need more energy to heat up all that water to That's get so it up to the level, right? Okay. So whether you have a little bit of moisture or a lot of moisture, you're still heating it up to the same level and you self-calibrate it to where you feel the warmth, it's working. And I mean... Thick-skinned, thin-skinned. <laughs> Doesn't matter because we go right through the epidermis like mm -hmm. it's invisible and we're absorbed in water. The variability, it's just too hard to pin down, basically, why one person standing next to the other might walk away with a better result from something like laser. So that that's true all throughout medicine. And frankly, uh, it's amazing. If you look at the clinical studies, you look at like uh, cholesterol drugs. Some people perform very well. 
some people have no reaction to them, right? Um, and if you look at the potential benefit, it's it's typically in the single digit percentage wise of people that really benefit to extend their life by taking these expensive drugs. Um, so you get a home run if you say 50% of the population get a really good result yeah. with any medical drug or device or whatever. Um, and so we're we're well above that with Nira. So not everyone's going to get a great results. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't get results, that's what we say. We'll give you your money back. You got yeah. nothing. You can't say fairer than that. Okay. Um, we're nearly there. I promised you. Thank you, David. <laughs> I've got another viewer asking about putting products on before using the Nero. You recommend clean, dry skin. How important is that? Oh, it's super important. Okay. Yeah. If you have any topicals on, especially if those topicals have water or oil, mm -hmm. you're going to be heating up the wrong area, right? You want to heat in the dermis, not in the epidermis. Okay. So almost all topicals, in fact, there's another good point, don't penetrate into the dermis, right? They really don't go deep. The dermal layer is... Epidermis is a great insulation buffer to keep out disease and bacteria and all sorts of things. So that's why you need a laser if you really want great results, because we can get below that barrier. Another person was asking about the difference between the Nera laser and the Tria laser. Now, I actually thought they were asking about the difference between laser for um, anti-aging and skin and hair removal which we've talked about. What's the difference between the Nira and say competitors, let's say on the market? Sure, so Nira is the only laser competitor I'm aware of that has a true laser. There's some mm -hmm. that claim they have a laser, but they really don't. Um, and Nira uses fractional technology. They use the same uh, technology in terms of the chip wavelength. They're both the same wavelength, but just like the professional dermatologists, they use the little dots and you get redness and you get pain. Mm -hmm. Almost okay. everyone gets pain and erythema or the redness, okay? They'll get equivalent results at the end, uh, but it's a much worse user experience and uh, it can be even more expensive. Um, so, but but that's why we came out with the NARA um, because it's it's much better user experience, but they'll both get comparable results. Pigmentation on the skin. Um... I have a viewer who thinks that the, the Nira may have made that worse on her skin. I've heard this with red light. Uh, what's your view about that? So we've not seen that in our mm -hmm. clinical studies. Um, in fact, we we had several dark colored skin and, and medium colored skin and, and white skin with you know potential pigmentation issues. There were no hyper or hypo pigmentation issues as side effects. Um, so I would think if, if they're having a problem, it had to be something else um, in their lifestyle or, you know, in, in what's going on with their, their skin that's uh, causing that. Another asks, can it help broken capillaries? It's not really designed for that. Mm. Uh, it, it will help rejuvenate your skin. So mm. anything that where you're rejuvenating your skin and your skin's you know, making new skin from the inside out, uh, there could be indirect effects. So that new skin could help, you know, overcome the the signs of those broken capillaries um, yeah. or, or dark spots or age spots, things of that nature. But we're not directly addressing those. Yes. And I had another viewer who asked me to relay that um, the before and after pictures on the site, she she felt that some women were smiling in before shots and then um, not smiling in after shots. Uh, and it's, you know, it's from personal experience, getting lighting and facial positioning and so on to be absolutely exact. It's something that I am always brought up on and I try to get stand in exactly the same spot and exactly the same lighting. But um, I mean, ideally, really, they should be completely neutral in, in both, right? I completely agree, yeah. yeah. So we, we've done our very best to do that. Um, and that's why we provide many, many um, examples. So if you find one or two, you, you can just ignore them if you think those those aren't the same look and you know skin uh, expression um, and you'll see most of them are, are, are very good and fair um, so yeah we and and we do that and and actually FDA looked for that yeah uh, is, yeah and they actually asked us and we complied immediately 
send us all your raw pictures. And I actually went through our raw pictures to make sure not only are they untouched, but that we fairly had good, you know, pairwise expressions. Um, and I noticed that you had, um, I mean, the neck is obviously, you can't, you can't really do much with the neck um, in terms of different expression. Um, and I noticed a couple of good before and afters with the neck. I mean, the neck being thinner skin, is that a little bit like around the eyes that it's quite a good area to use laser on because it's thinner skin? I think that's a good good assessment. Uh, we're going to do clinical studies in that area and be able to provide more data in the future. Yeah. Okay. Well, David, I have come to the end of my list and I've got to say a big thanks because you've been a really good sport. You've you've answered all those questions. You didn't try and vet the questions um, or limit the questions. And I appreciate that. And I think my viewers will as well. You've been, you've been upfront with us. Thank you. I hope that wasn't too punishing for you. Not, not at all. In fact, I get into this stuff, so I'm, I'm happy to do it. Uh, you're welcome to have me back if, if there's other questions or new products. Um, I love, love it. And you do a great job informing from a very unbiased um, position. So it's, it's a great service to your community. Oh, so keep up I appreciate that. I would love to have you back as well. And maybe when you do some more of your trials, you could come back and share those results with us. How would that be? I'd love that. Let's plan on it. Perfect. So there we have it. I certainly feel I have a better understanding now of precisely how these devices work and how they differ to others on the market. And I hope that you do too. Well, I've always said, I feel using something like the Nira every single day is more than I want to commit to. I have reintroduced it into my routine again, following this interview, but using it every other day and just above my brow and around my jawline and under my chin where I need most help. For those interested in buying the Nira or finding more about it, I'll share a discount code and link to it in the description, uh, along with links to my reviews of both the Precision and Pro models. But I wanna hear your views on this conversation. Did it answer your questions about the Nira and whether it's worth the investment? And would you like to see more interviews like this one on the channel with creators of devices and better known skincare products? I love to hear your feedback because it helps me bring you the most valuable content in the most helpful formats. And if you're enjoying my content, then by subscribing and hitting the notification bell, you won't miss future videos on the latest on skincare and how to age well. For now, thanks for joining me today and I'll see you next time.